What is happening? Welcome to another pitcher video breakdown. My name is Nick Pollock, founder of Pitchless, former pitching coach and uh, college baseball pitcher, all of that stuff. But yeah, we are going to talk about Eric Lauer today. He's start over the weekend. Second straight start with double digit strikeouts. How did this happen? What is he doing differently? What's going on? We're going to talk about all of that and more today on this pitch video breakdown. But first, go to twitch.tv slash pitchless. Watch this live stream at 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern time every single weekday morning. Answer all of your questions, all the stuff we talk about this and more there you should be there come hang out and of course hit that subscribe button hit the bell all that fun stuff helps me out a ton make sure you never miss any of these video breakdowns we actually have some fun stuff in the works that are gonna be more than this um that i can't wait to talk about later but right now we're gonna talk about eric lauer what a wonderful thing and the first thing you're gonna notice with this last year increases velocity on his fastball to 14 percent because he was elevating up here effectively with that four seamer this year, 22.5% swing striker on his four-seamer leads the majors among all starting pitchers with swing striker on his four-seamer. So that's what we're going to see. We're going to see a lot of that stuff up here. What a wonderful usage of my colors. And then you're going to be seeing curveballs fall in for strikes early in counts. And then you're going to see this lovely cutter that comes in this way. It's going to be great. So let's do it in the second inning. How did this work out for Lauer? So first batter here. Uh, he's trying to get that fastball inside the zone. That's only a 92. Uh, we actually have seen 94 this year consistently. And what do you know? What does he do? Free real estate. That's a 1-0 curveball. Doing that consistently. He has a 30% called strike rate this year on that curveball. That's lovely stuff for Eric Lauer. Uh, so with that set up, he tries to get another one. Uh, that's not free real estate. That's uh, You got to pay for that one. Uh, he goes upstairs, and that's with a cutter. And this is a really tough pitch to decide against a good bat like Suzuki. Do you swing at this or not? It looks like it's going to be a uh, a fastball that kind of comes up here and then falls back down to the zone. And maybe Suzuki is looking for that heater and thinks, you know what, even though it's high, I'm going to swing at this. And it falls under the bat like this, and it just messes up your timing. It's really confusing. Now, if Suzuki was looking for this pitch, this is not what you want. This is what we call a hanger. But traditionally, you can get away with this kind of stuff because if you have a dominating fastball, which Lauer does have, you're not really looking for this to come back in the zone. If you see that high up, you're thinking that's a heater. It wasn't here. He got away with it. Now you can actually pair it with that fastball upstairs here. Oh, and he did. And that's what you want to do, right? You want to be... <laughs> look at that extra eyebrow he's got. Uh, you want to be up in the zone there with that heater. If you go back to it, you could do that, honestly. With Suzuki swinging twice now at fastballs up here. You got to think it really expands the zone for a changeup or slider, something down at this point. And that was down. 95, it stunned Suzuki. And that, honestly, is <laughs> something we don't talk about enough. Uh, so because you have the eye-level stuff, right? And as a hitter, when you see a guy like Lauer that is that extreme four-seamers up and then secondary stuff down, right? Like falling, falling into that is what I should do. Then you have this coming in here. That's the slider. You have maybe the changeup coming away like that. That's a terrible look of it. I'm going to say it's that. Uh, you get into this groove where anything that is up, you take as a fastball. Or really, the fastball that would be up. And then anything that is low in the zone, you expect to fall out of it. So it does mean that you can throw a fastball that instead stays low and goes out. Right? It actually freezes down here. And I wouldn't get too trigger happy with it, or not trigger happy, but I wouldn't fall in love with that approach. Because then, uh, if you do it too often, then the guys are going to hit that, right? But that's how you get someone like Suzuki, a really good hitter, not swinging at a fast, but looks very hittable, right? He just was selling out for a high low, uh, and Lauer snuck it in there. Pretty cool. So, well, you know, it's more free real estate, except it's not free real estate because it doesn't get it. But that's been the approach a lot. Uh, with Lauer, I think over 70% of his curveballs that come early in counts like that. Um, and there he goes with a fastball. <laughs> oh, man, Schwindel. Okay, so you saw Schwindel not go after the curveball. I mean, he was out of the zone in the first place, but imagine if Lauer got in the zone, Schwindel was not going to swing at it because at 1-0, he's thinking fastball again. He got one, but that, yeah, no, that wasn't the one you wanted. And I think that's a cutter at 91, which I think is the right approach because Strindell is kind of showcasing I want a fastball like Suzuki did. And you could, if you executed this, would be something that comes in here and then falls off and you probably would get a foul ball or a ground out. 
That's what he's trying to do there. I would honestly go back to it at two one. I think Schmidel's gonna be very aggressive on this two one count. Um, no, that's a fastball up and away. Not great. This is this is easily the worst at bat I've seen. I think he's poorly executed every single pitch he's thrown. Even that ninety three mile per hour fastball that got the whiff it was above the zone, and you you want it to be at one zero inside the zone. So that's. <laughs> So that's Lauer just pretty much being like, all right, let me throw a strike. He was trying to get it up here. It fell on down over here, but Schwindel not even making contact on that. I don't know. If I'm if I'm Lauer, I'm thinking, just throw another fastball, whatever. Beat me on it, buddy. And he gets it inside, but the it looked like it was much farther than it was, but I think he got in far enough. You know, inside here, jammed, and everything had been away. But Schwindel wasn't able to send it for a ride. Let's see one more time. Oh, I think that's even the cutter. It looked like a hard cutter. I mean, let's look at this movement. Eh, maybe it was a fastball. Either way, it got farther in on the bat uh, to Schwindel and it, you know, to get a pop. Let's see if it's free real estate here again. No. So here's the thing. This is the third bat of the inning. First two guys throwing that early curveball, right? And Gomes is there pretty much watching the entire time. Generally speaking, you can't do the same approach three times in a row. So there's a fastball down, and you're thinking, mm, can I get away with that curveball right now? Oh, what? Is he sending this for a ride? Oh, man. Wow. That's wild. Okay, so everything I just said was wrong. <laughs> I mean, I'm wrong. Like, I'm, th I'm saying, look, if he throws a 1-0 a curveball now, Gomes should be ready for that, right? Uh, and... It's not the case. So first two batters in this situation, 1-0. Lauer would be going with a curveball, trying to get that free real estate on inside the zone. Uh, but he goes with a fastball, 1-0. And really, this inning, you guys have seen, Lauer's four-seamer not well commanded in this inning. Overall for the start, yes. Not in this inning. And at 1-0, this is a fastball count. Gomes gets, I mean, traditionally, has him in this inning and really most of the time for Lauer. But Gomes, 1-0, he's like, I don't care. If it's curveball, it's a curveball. I'm going to be sitting on a fastball. And this is where we don't want to swing. Or sorry, we don't want to put our fastballs. Think, take a moment. Think to yourself, where do you not want to put a fastball? Especially in a 1-0 count here. Uh, there are certain guys like Clayton Kershaw that can get away with this. Maybe Max Free too. But Eric Lauer isn't one of them as you do not want to throw a 1-0 fastball down in the zone. And inside. This is exactly where the barrel of the bat is. If a guy is getting ready and gearing up for your fastball, you don't want to put it in a place where you can just drop the barrel and drive it. Uh, this was a mistake from Eric Lauer, and he got punished by J John Gomes. Yeah, it's not, it's not what you want. It's not what you want. All right, free real estate me. Thank you. Oh, come on. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care that was a hit. This is this is so silly. I guess they're shifting Hap because I mean this is this is a jam shot. There is no scenario. There is no scenario where a right-handed hitter in an 0-0 count is going to be looking for a curveball inside and want to in and out that pitch to right field, right? Like, he's not saying, okay, this is going to be curveball. It's going to come inside, and I'm going to adjust on it and push it to right field. And this is so weakly hit. Like, look at this thing. This is – and also, where – I guess they had him shifted really heavily towards the left side because this is right – this is right where the, the second baseman normally would be. Look at this thing. It barely makes it to the outfield grass. This is like such a gimme floater out of where a second baseman normally would be. Sometimes, you know, that's just baseball. Oh, man. All right, so fine. Man on first, whatever. You do the same stuff. You're not going to get that call. Good. You don't deserve it. You don't need it. You don't need that call, Lauer. Yeah, he tries to do free for this. He doesn't get it. And that's the cutter. And it, that's what we saw before with Suzuki. Is that that's a really hard one to hit. This is what Lance Mc... Not Lance McCullough, my gosh. Colin McHugh did back in the day. Angel Sanchez did back in the day. You see a lot of guys that can actually live with this cutter that, again, is looks like it's coming up here, but then falls back in and down to the zone. It's borderline to guys. They think it might be the fastball that they're on, and it's not, and it just messes them up. 
You can you can steal strikes all the time with that man. Did not execute. Mauer's not executing in this inning whatsoever. That's not where he's trying to get it, though. Lauer is trying to go up here. That is a bit of a mistake. It's kind of what Jan Gomes is. This is actually better than the Jan Gomes one because it's a little bit more up and in, in toward um, inside. Like the Jan Gomes one was down here, and that's better for the barrel of the bat. 3-2. Uh, you got to throw the high heater here. Make him beat you. Yeah. 94. Value. And it's just a really hard heater to hit. And that 94 is way different than the 92 we saw last year from Eric Lauer. Not the best in cleanest inning, honestly. Uh, I I think of all the innings to start, I want to show one that had positives and negatives. I think you can see, I mean, sure, this is uh, Hammersillo, who I'm sure a lot of you didn't really know existed on the Cubs. <laughs> uh, but Eric Lauer, he was able to overpower them with heaters in this one. I think we saw at least two whiffs on fastballs and then another two on cutters. Um, it's really good. It's a really, really good hit heater. If you can throw that curveball more so in the, in the zone and not be as predictable with it, I think maybe the slider um, could be a little bit used more. I mean, really, we saw him try and get free real estate a lot. The reason it's free real estate is because it's not used all the time, right? Every so often you get that in there and then they're not looking for it. If you're throwing it constantly in, you know, 0010 counts. It won't be free anymore. And you'll get those stupid Ian half hits. But anyway, Eric Lauer's really good. Is he going to strike out 10 every single time? No, he's not. He's probably going to be like a strikeout in inning. But that's awesome. And we're cool with that. So I'm excited to watch this unfold uh, for the Brewers this year. If, especially if he stays at 94. Eric Lauer's going to be really good. But that's going to do it for today's Pitch Video Breakdown. My name is Nick Pollock. Go hang out on Twitch. Go subscribe. And of course, you can check out all my work on PitchList.com. I put out like three articles a day about pitching. So, yeah, go check all that out. That's going to do it for today. So, my name is Nick Pollock, and of course, may your babbits be low and your strike outside.